Welcome to my channel. In case you're new here, just consider subscribing to the channel right now. Uh, like this video, comment and share to bless others. This one is about the ABC of prophecy. Now, there are a number of issues that prophetic folks, prophetic people, apostles, prophets, you know, teachers who are prophetic, pastors who are prophetic, evangelists who are prophetic, and uh, prophetic people in general need to know about prophecy so that they can do the prophetic uh, prophetic with excellence that's my concern in this video whether you are at the apex of prophecy already you've been there for a long time and have been doing the prophetic stuff well or you're just coming into the prophetic uh, as a new bee uh, just been called or the prophetic stuff is becoming a thing that you are just getting the awareness of uh, in the recent time, you can follow me in this video uh, and uh, get something uh, for yourself that you know uh, is powerful enough and uh, eye-opening, and uh, positions you to become the best that you can be, like the prophets of old that you always uh, admire, or even the contemporary prophets that are doing it well. The concern here is, or uh, my you know heartfelt uh, and a serious uh, issue here is. To become an ideal or genuine prophet of God you know we have prophets everywhere we have the fake ones we have those who imitate others not uh, let me put them there are those who are quacks they are not prophets there are those who are doing the right thing and I trust that you want to do the right thing that's why you are here in my channel now the prophetic thing or prophecy begins here when you are born again, you come to the saving knowledge of Christ Jesus. Please, let's start from there. No matter who you are, ensuring that you've uh, come to the point where you know that you know that you know that you're born again, you are saved, and a child of God is point number one of relevance. Now, if indeed you are born again, the Spirit of God dwells in you. You can hear him. Like Jesus said that in John chapter 10, uh, 11, 14. He said that my sheep hear my voice. He also talked about he know them and they know him. From that point, that is where we stand in the New Testament as prophetic people. That's the point number one. A point number two is the place of the infilling of the Holy Spirit or with the Holy Spirit. You've been filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, the idea of the Holy Spirit coming in you is that you are baptized, you know, into the Holy Spirit. And who does the baptism? Jesus Christ, the Son of God, does the work of baptizing you into the Holy Spirit. Now, it doesn't matter the church setting or denomination or background that you're coming from. Whether from the Orthodox uh, background, Protestant background, you know, Pentecostal background, prophetic background, or what, uh, whichever uh, other background we can talk about. Is it Luther uh, Lutheranism and so on? It doesn't matter. The thing here is that you've come to the saving knowledge of Christ Jesus, which can be said to be Moravianism, uh, yeah, in terms of doctrine. And you have come to identify like uh, William Seymour, that the infilling of the Holy Spirit comes with a lot of, you know, changes in the life of an individual believer. Now, you are opened to the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ, the Son of God, baptizes you into the Holy Spirit. No, the Holy Spirit is a liquid fire. The Holy Spirit is a liquid flame. The Holy Spirit is a being. You get me? The third personality of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit can be interacted with. The Holy Spirit can have a personal relationship with you as a prophetic fellow. Now, starting from there, being filled with the Holy Spirit, with the consciousness of the fact that as the Spirit of God is now dwelling in you and you can attest to the fact that you are filled with the Holy Spirit of God with the evidence of speaking in tongues, that's one. Next, the Spirit of God communicates with you from this moment. Every born-again child of God who is filled with the Holy Spirit in turn is a potential prophet. So the thing is that I've had people 
who tend to prophesy, but the Spirit of God doesn't talk to them. <laughs> you get me? They are not at all interacting with the Holy Spirit in mutual and all. When you are baptized and the Holy Spirit are filled with the Holy Spirit, you should be able to have a fellowship with the Holy Spirit of God. And we develop this atmosphere of fellowship, one, through worship, that's in songs, two, through the in-depth studying of the Word of God, New Testament uh, especially, and uh, the Acts of the Apostles, to be precise. Now, the life of in the Spirit, or the life of the Spirit, yeah, this is uh, absorbable into your life when you start taking your time on the epistles from Romans, you know, to Jude, or even to the work of Apostle John in Revelation. You take out your time there. Over time, the life of the Spirit of God, the personality of Jesus, which cannot be separated from that of the Holy Spirit, now is formed in you. Prophets, prophets before prophecy should have the character of Jesus. They should have the life of the Spirit. The life that is led by the Spirit of God. You, 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 you get me? So that they now begin to receive directives from the Holy Spirit for themselves. That's why the issue of the gifts of the Spirit are opened to the entire body of Christ, not just to the prophets. You get me? So that a, 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 you are not a prophet, but you are born again. You are now baptized in the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, tongue speaking. You can have the gift of wisdom where God can tell you what you should go out to do tomorrow, next week, next year. Yeah. Word of knowledge where you can pick things that have happened in the past in your life. It doesn't mean that you are a prophet. No, it means that you are living a life in the spirit. This is where ideal prophets start from or stem from. Yeah. Now, you should be able to discern spirits, even though you are yet to uh, start the stuff of the prophetic. But you see, uh, many people just want to jump in on the prophetic uh, faculty. They just want to be operating as prophets without these uh, rudimentary traits. So, some have outgrown. It's just like people who jump uh middle school to the college there are prophets who started at the elementary level jumped the middle level and went into the college level of the prophetic tell me what they can do everything i did in the university had the foundation on my uh, middle school studies i can tell you that everything i did in science or in social science in the university had a bearing to something i did in my middle school days uh, that's the high school days. So prophets misbehave or malfunction or operate as quacks when they can't reconcile their work with the Holy Spirit on a regular basis. I've had people who tend to come to challenge you, uh, sons and daughters, brought up in the gospel. I discovered that they are doing, they, they don't even know how to interact with the Spirit of God yet, but they are already prophets. You get they just want to be heard. <laughs> they prophesy. You know, you prophesy to people, they come behind and they prophesy. This is why error is coming into the body of Christ in the name of prophecy. You get what I'm saying? I prophesy on the pulpit and all shall somewhere there follow somebody to the road to prophesy to them. <laughs> what the Spirit is telling them to tell to this person that the Spirit did not tell the apostle. Raymond to prophesy to them and you wonder whether this person who is prophesying to you now on the street <laughs> or outside the church ever had a fellowship with the Spirit of God or had it any time to settle down with the Spirit of God to fellowship to talk to this guys so let's look at Abraham our father the Lord spoke to him in Genesis chapter 12 now move away from your country from your people from your family to a place that I will show you this is where prophecy begins. From. Now, God began to talk to Abraham concerning himself. You get me? For the taste of prophecy, A, B, C, are you getting me? The A is you come into the faith and being filled with the Holy Spirit. The B issue, if I want to put it that way, should be that now you have started receiving divine directions that are prophecies for yourself and they are coming to pass. Some time ago, he told me about me 
I'm calling you to prophesy to the dry bones. Today I prophesy and it's true. I started gradually and it was working. Many people gave their lives to Jesus when I did crusades then as a mark of the fact that he spoke to me and it was correct. Now, I left some things. I was working with Ecofarm sometime in 2000 and 2001. I had to resign as the manager of Ecofarms to step into ministry in full. It was like I was mad, you know, but I had to do that because I really heard God to ask me to do this. Now, it was not easy going, but it, as a matter of fact, it came to pass that as I went out to prophesy to people, I, I won souls into the kingdom by the help of the Holy Spirit of God. So the first thing about the prophetic is that God is going to be talking to you about you who is now desiring to prophesy to people. Don't look at prophesying to people as an object or as a, a focus, as a thing of consent. No. The first thing is that the prophecies God is giving about you, to you, uh, they come into pass. Are they coming to pass? That's the issue. You should watch out way that the things he's telling you about you, they're coming to pass. That's when you can now begin to confirm whether it's the Spirit of God indeed that's talking to you. Before the same Spirit now comes to talk to you about somebody, and it becomes true. The Spirit should have spoken to you about you, and it comes to pass regularly. I don't mean once in a blue moon. I don't mean once in 10 years. There are people who are, you know, confused about where they are going to. Let us tutor you out into the class, the B portion of the ABC of the prophecy, where, or prophecy, where you are able to receive a word for yourself and the word is coming to pass. That way you will be uh, a man, you'll be, you, you'll be emancipated, you get what I'm saying, from where you used to be to a place, you know, you are migrating from a place where you used to be in bondage, absolute bondage, to a place where at least the Spirit of God can use you to participate relevantly in bringing yourself out of a particular bondage. Now, there are a lot of people that I teach uh, in church and uh, I discovered that until today, many of them are in bondage because they just want to jump somewhere. You don't jump there about the issue of their career, about the issue of their calling, about the issue of, let's say, their marriage. They just want to jump some things there. No. The Spirit of God should be able to use you to influence issues around your life. First, He told me a lot of things about me, and I'm not regretting today taking those steps. Yeah. And that's why I know He actually said those things, because Gradually, they are coming to pass. Today, I prophesy like crazy, but I wasn't prophesying before. He told me myself. He didn't tell my father, your son is going to be a prophet. He didn't tell someone else, I was going to be a prophet. I had somebody told me uh, back in uh, high school days, the last year in high school, one of my senior uh, mentors who happened to be a father in the Lord then, uh, told me that you are going to be, you know, uh, a great man of God. But that doesn't mean you are going to be a great prophet. He said, you're going to be a great man of God. Of course, I was mad with him, or mad at him when he said that because I was looking at, at, at myself as a, a, an engineer, somebody who is going to be an automaker. That's, that was my concern. And that was my goal until God saw that zeal that I had for automaking, auto manufacturing, uh, my inclination to the automobile sector. And then he said, no, come and manufacture prophets for me. Come and man manufacture spiritual, prophetic people for me. And I'm here doing this thing. Now, I'm not regretting. Because there is nothing that is going to make me uh, an obsolete or irrelevant in this generation and in the generation to come. Because of the attention I'm, I've given to this calling. But the thing is that he influenced me to direct me first. So prophets must know and learn how to receive the message of God for themselves first. Before they start talking about messages to other people. When the more he gives you messages about you, your career, your destiny, your family, I mean, your ministry, and you begin to work along that path, you get me, the more you are becoming solidified and ready, having in you the readiness to begin to receive messages for others that will come to pass. Several often you discover that marine spirits, familiar spirits, Spirits of confusion and divination in the air try to possess people who are called. I mean, what I'm telling you, 
I said the first thing is you're coming into the faith and then being baptized in the Holy Spirit and then started, you start having a fellowship with the Spirit, the Father and the Son, where you hear their voice can distinguish when they speak to you and not the devil talking to you. It starts from there. The next thing is that he begin now to use you to prophesy to you. That's the next stage of this uh, ABC of the prophetic. You get me? Now, this stage, this second stage is where in turn, familiar spirits, you know, uh, neighborhood spirits uh, and uh, all kinds of useless spirit, marine spirits and so on, try to come to infiltrate in you. But you are called. This second stage where God start using you to talk to you is a stage where the thing, the call into the prophetic start coming in. This is where you can now tell me, God called me. But it doesn't mean that because he called you already in the office of the prophecy of the prophet or that you can prophesy with accuracy yet. Please hold on. He's going to use you to prophesy to you first over and over just to ascertain accuracy. This is the phase where you see visions at random. Some visions are just there confusing. You see things about people. They are not meant to be prophesied to them yet. You just want to perfect some of your prophetic ability. Like you can see with clarity now. Not that you go and prophesy to Elizabeth because you saw something with clarity about her. He just wants you to be able to see with clarity, hear with clarity, you know, perceive with clarity and accuracy and then test with clarity and accuracy, you know, in terms of testing and then feeling. Yeah, all of these prophetic abilities you want to develop in you first. Please hold on. You get what I'm saying? There are times when a familiar spirit will begin to push you, go ahead and do a big meeting and prophesy to people. Now, go ahead and prophesy to someone so, and then, you know, command the demons out. This is where people now come back possessed. Because they send themselves. They've not been able to distinguish between the voice of God and the voice of the devil. So when the devil pushes them out to embark on prophetic mission, I'm telling you, the devil can push you out to do a prophetic work that you are not set for. And God is not sending you to do. And in the process, you come back possessed with demons. And you still think you are a prophet. And in the process, you start malfunctioning. And you remain in cap captivity. That way, your destiny, your calling, everything is hijacked by the devil and you're locked up there. So when you look at Isaiah chapter 6, you discover that God worked on the prophet Isaiah first. You look at Jeremiah chapter 1, you discover that God worked on Jeremiah first. You look at, uh, how do you call him, Ezekiel chapter 1 or chapter 3, you discover that God worked on the prophet first. You look at Exodus from chapter 1 until chapter 3, God was working on the prophet first. So in all cases, when God calls, the B section of the call is when God starts working with you. You get me? He works on you until he is now okay, satisfied. Then he releases you. So we can go to the C portion, which I may now say, uh, you know, uh, let me say the B is, uh, the, the, the A should be, uh, mean ABC, like I said, A should mean appointment, and then B should mean the breeding stage, and C should mean the commission stage. In the commission stage is when God starts sending you out. This is when God starts sending you out a prophesy. And before you come to this level, I want to tell you some of these secrets here briefly. God will talk to you privately. God will show you some secrets about how to prophesy, uh, where to prophesy, your scope, your people and audience and all of that. He will he kind of either bring you under mentors that can polish you, help you out in those areas that you are yet to be set to do the prophetic. Now, if he have to bring you up alone, it's going to take a longer journey even. And uh, believe you me, I've found in the body of Christ that people who have never been mentored by anybody want to come into the faith today and begin to prophesy to the public tomorrow. And they end up becoming weeds in the body of Christ and scatter the church. 
You get what I'm saying? If God is ever going to disciple you alone, it's going to take a longer time to do so. Think about the prophet Samuel. It's going to take a longer time to do so. Even though that word came, there was somebody mentoring him. Remember, Eli was here. The Bible was silent about, uh, silent about what happened between him and Eli. It doesn't mean that the guy was just prophesying profusely without a, a mentor. So in the absence of a mentor or a father in the Lord who is a prophet or spiritual uh, parent, let me put it that way, to include a female prophetess, a female as a prophetess, who could mentor you, the process is going to be longer. You get me? So please and please, this is where you see people dying as casualty like something in the wilderness of the prophetic journey because they have not submitted to be mentored and uh, being in the prophetic for years now decades i can tell you that the prophetic jungle is one of the hardest volitions or uh, yeah walks that somebody can find themselves you get what i'm saying uh, for the attacks you know that come from all quarters and uh, for the rebuke of God where necessary and uh, for the strictness of the Spirit of God that leads the prophets. You dare not misplace one pin for another, one message for another. You don't add, you don't reduce as you see people do this thing today, thinking that you can just uh, prophesy whatever you think. Now, when I see people say, I prophesy, they write it, they say it in meetings. You see evangelists, you see pastors, you see uh, brothers, uh, people that are just worshippers, they carry my microphone they want to sing they say can I prophesy by which spirit you get what I'm saying uh, somebody who can prophesy at will is in the office of the prophet so that's why some of the things we say don't come to pass because these things are not coming from God or at least motivated by the spirit of God or motivated by the spirit of faith so there are stepwise journey here. You get what I'm saying? God is going to walk you into a lot of mysteries. How many mysteries have you ever seen? You see the visions that Daniel had, very much on earthly. The visions that John had, very much on earthly. To be a prophet is still in realms. We don't all operate in the same realm. You get what I'm saying? So when I seek into certain realm and I begin to pour prophecy like popcorn, it's not like it's not like it's uh you know you are just prophesying at a superficial level. It's a product of time, please. You get what I'm saying? Don't hurry to be there. The first thing is to be prepared. John took time to prophesy. Nobody was there to build him up. The boy left home and became a man. In the wilderness. You get what I'm saying? Even the Lord Jesus Christ had to wait. For a while. Before he went out. He had to be mature. We have too many people that are not mature enough. You know. You know. I see a lot of women in the church today. If they were Mary Magdalene. They would have opened ministry. And named him Elohim. Uh, Elohim Jireh ministry. And Mary Magdalene. Because she had seen the Lord. Uh, she would begin to prophesy. But she. Just look at it. Was she not supposed to be a prophetess? Was she not supposed to be prophesying? The fact that you are around a prophet. And were privileged. Was privileged to see a vision one day. Doesn't automatically make you a prophet. You dream. When you sleep. Doesn't automatically make you a prophet. You may see it there. The fact that they are worshipping in church. And you see something pass doesn't automatically make you a prophet please hold on if you want to be a prophet go through the right process and the thing is that the abc process have god commissioned you god is going to walk you through processes and in the process of time he's going to commission you now when god called me into the prophetic and i asked him god when do you want me to begin the process of doing this thing that you asked me to do he said now i didn't want to step in but he said now i heard him sound and clear my mother wanted to say that's biological it's not time, son. You're going to do this, do that. But I said, the one who called me said, it's time. And it's now. That's a different issue. You get what I'm saying here? In that case, God is ready to tell you in a shape so you don't miss it. But if God isn't the one commissioning you, but zeal is pushing you in, please hold on. Zeal is not enough to make you a prophet or a prophetess. You get what I'm saying? The fact that the thing is burning there, that's not an issue. The preparation is the matter. And that requires tutelage, mentoring, 
That's what I'm trying to talk about here. Find yourself under a prophetic atmosphere. Learn about the prophetic. I mean, go deep into the prophetic. So when you prophesy, your prophecy can be guaranteed to come to pass. You get what I'm saying? And you should be also prepared for the battles that come after a prophetic ministry because prophetic ministries are fought the most. You get what I'm saying? It's not about a thing of fancy. The fact that we put on good clothes and we appear on the tele or YouTube channel to, uh, to teach and uh, to prophesy doesn't mean that the whole thing is rosy as it looks. No! The prophetic ministry attracts a lot of battles. Are you ready for the battles? I'm not trying to scare you, but I want to make you understand that you have to be ready because you're going to be fought. And because you are ready for the battle, you are going to skate through the battle and do God the job that he sent you to do. And you're going to make God proud at the end of the day. Raising prophets that will last in ministry and be of value to leave a legacy after they are done uh, takes a process. And these are prophets who can go into any realm, penetrate into any realm in the, in the spirit and bring out things, execute them in, the, uh, in real life. And you are shocked what's really happened. They know how to permeate into the realm of the spirit. Yeah. I didn't overnight start seeing people's uh, underwears. Yeah. There was a day I just came to his church service and a lady was standing in front of me. She was putting on a black tie under the skirt she was putting on, or gown rather. The other one was putting on a brown one. I said, you come here, you're putting on a brown tie. You come here, you're putting on a, 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 a black tie. And, and they both said, yeah, correct. Why did I have to say that? Yeah. The other one I called, I said, now, you have five onions <laughs> on the table before you left. You cut one, you know, a half. So it's four and a half, in fact. And then I started counting the number of pepper that she had still left at home. I told her the exact measure of rice that she had on the table. It didn't start overnight. I was caught in the prophetic many, a decade plus, but it took a decade plus before I came to church. And then I called this lady and I told her the exact measure of the rice she had and what's left of at home. Now, the basket she had on the table, the color of the basket, it was plastic. It was yellow. And she was like, she was shocked. But this is the same apostle you've been meeting. He'd never gone this deep before. It took a lot of spiritual exercise, okay? Remember the man, as I conclude, that Jesus touched his eye for the first time in Mark. Jesus touched this blind man's eye. And uh, the blind man, Jesus asked him, and he said that I see men walking like trees. Believe you me, give this man a cutlass. He will cut men down because he saw them like trees. There are prophets that if you give them cutlass, they will cut men down because they are not seen clearly. They are seen people like trees. Until the second touch, touch Jesus touched him again and said, how do you see? And I say, I see men clearly now walking. Initially, first touch, they saw. He saw men walking like trees. Can you see that? So this is a secret about the prophetic. You need a second touch. The second touch is a process. You get that. So we have the A, we have the B, and then we have the C. A, appointment. That's when you are appointed and then you have access to say, Abba, Father. Then B, you have the you go through the breeding stage. This stage, you are silent, you are not known. And then lastly, you come to the commission stage where God allows you to go into the prophetic field and then you become you advance to become a prophetic mafia like daniel like john and like some of the contemporary prophets of today Yo, so god bless you father lord i pray for the release of an uncommon prophetic grace upon this fellow in front of me in jesus mighty name amen